Now, I will confess that I actually was a little bit intrigued and excited to at least some degree about this concept of WWE Day 1. Now, why not have a pay-per-view on the first day of the year? Chance to start off the new year in a new way. Excuse me, not a pay-per-view. The pay-per-view happening on Saturday night, New Year's Day, not a ton else going on. Cool, but let's not call it a pay-per-view. Let's call it a premium live event. If that doesn't sound like the typical type of watered-down corporate BS that you would expect from WWE, I don't know what the hell was. Why not just call it a special event? See? Short, sweet, had somebody tweet that it sounded a premium live event sounds like some OnlyFans subscription bullshit, and that's what, kind of what it sounds like, to be fair. Why, why do they always gotta water it down and overcomplicate it? Just call it a special event and be done with it. Hey, whatever. But, no doubt a big part of looking forward to this show was to be able to see Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns for the Universal Championship. Of course, unfortunately, Roman Reigns was out at the last minute due to a positive COVID test. Fudge! Fudge, fudge, fudge! A one match that you really had that you could sink your teeth into. The one match that you could really truly look forward to. The one match that could have almost everybody emotionally engaged and invested in what's going to happen. And now you're not even going to get it. New Year, same crap. Instead, WWE has to scramble and call an audible and call an audible with Brock and oh boy, did they ever. But more on that in a couple of moments. So let's talk about the actual main card. The SmackDown Tag Team Championship, New Day versus The Usos. I have no doubts that this is the type of match that when you go to a live event is spectacular to watch in person. Because the feeling, the ambiance, the environment, the experience is just different in person. But for me, sitting at home, watching it on my couch, I can only get but so excited for a match that I've seen so many damn times. Where the match dynamics even are largely the same as what I've seen so many times before. If you're going to insist on doing this, at least have more of the Usos incorporating crap talking about... What they've learned from Roman Reigns, the tribal chief, and being more brutal, being more aggressive. Like, give me more of that, and then at least the match dynamics change some. Instead, this feels like uh, paint-by-numbers copy and paste that I've seen several times. Yes, it's good, but yes, I also don't really care that much. That's just the way it is. But I digress. I mean, it was a good opener for those that only care about the matches and don't care about any of that other stuff. Mad Cat Moss versus Drew McIntyre. Maybe, 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 because you don't have the Universal Championship match. Maybe there's time to fill on the main card. I get that. But do we have to fill it like this? Now, soapbox for just a moment. You could have been preparing yourself here to be a few weeks away from bum-ass Broke Baron Corbin being poised and ready to strike and win the Royal Rumble and have a very organically, almost universally over babyface that was intriguing and interesting that could have really been something for you to latch on to in the first quarter or two of 2022. But instead he's here playing sidekick to his fucking sidekick in a match against Drew McIntyre. And why the hell is Drew McIntyre struggling with this sidekick like this? This is supposed to be one of your top dudes, your top dogs. And you're having them struggle with a scrub for all intents and purposes. Who the fuck does that? Who does this benefit? Who does this help? In this era of 50-50, everybody's got their, get their bullshit in. Guess what? Nobody's helped by it. Nobody gets over. What else would you expect from modern wrestling or sports entertainment? Doesn't matter. It's all the same shit at this point. Only thing that I was thinking about during this match... Honestly, other than why is this match still a thing? Why hasn't this been a squash match that was over five minutes ago? Was I would have loved to have been in the creative session where somebody explained what madcap meant to Vince McMahon. I would have loved to have 
seen Vince's reaction, heard his reaction, and having somebody have to go over that with him repeatedly would have been fantastic. But other than that, fuck this match. The Raw Tag Team Championship, Street Profits versus RK Bro. I don't watch Raw, so I don't really care that much, admittedly. Uh, I guess if you're going to have Migos out there and they're actually going to come out and sit ringside, why not at least put them on commentary? I don't know. I tweeted like, yeah, nothing says Migos like RK Bro winning when you've got the Street Profits there, but I had it explained to me on Twitter that apparently Migos are big fans of Randy Orton and they took pictures with him in the airport a few years ago, so whatever. But, again, okay match. But, yeah, I just didn't care that much. And that's the problem is it's hard to get emotionally invested in a lot of these things because you don't have a company that makes you emotionally invested in many of these things. Now, The Miz versus Edge, I will admit, this was one that intrigued me going into the show. It did. Now, not as much as it could have if I actually watched Raw, sure. But, I like the thought, I like the concept, I like where they're going. And the match was cool, it certainly wasn't epic or anything, but it was about the best you probably could have expected that these two would be able to put together. But the reality is, same thing for me, is everyone was just waiting for Beth Phoenix to show up, when she was going to show up, how she was going to show up, and what she was going to do once she did. And where it's going to lead to. And we got those answers. Like her coming out, like that was badass. Her running Maurice off, cool. The way it's set up for Edge to hit Miz with the spear and get the win, okay, now we're building towards a mixed tag match, you would assume maybe at the Royal Rumble. Fine. Cool. That's about the best you can get out of this one. The Raw Women's Championship. I mean, did you really think Liv Morgan was going to win? <laughs> oh, that's cute. <laughs> oh, this shit was sloppy. It was bad. And of course, big time Bex, your fucking stupid goat, combined a botch the hell out of the finish. Like... Supposed to have the foot on the ropes? Yeah, we're out of position, so fuck it. We're just going to roll with it anyways, because you don't care. The pushing of the big four of these women has ruined this damn division on both Raw and SmackDown, talking about the women for WWE. Now, this match was bad. But go ahead and stand, your overrated-ass goat. Could you imagine sitting there and trying to be taken seriously and saying Becky Lynch is a fucking goat? It's one thing that WWE is doing it with their recency bias because they have agenda. They have something to push. I get it. Same shit they did for years with John Cena. Everything they were doing was trying to position him in a way to where they could portray him at some point, present him at some point as being their goat. Like you knew, but you understand. But at least you could understand where they were coming from. Like to me, these fans sitting there talking about these fanboys and fangirls talking about Becky Lynch is the go to women's wrestling just shows how far the bar has been lowered. Shows how low the standards are in modern professional wrestling, my opinion. But enough about that other crap that you don't really care about at this point, frankly. Let's talk about this WWE Championship Fatal Five Way because, yes, that was the big audible that was called. Brock doesn't have a match against Roman because Roman tested positive for COVID and he's out. So you got to find something to do for Brock because you're fucking paying him for the event. So they shoehorn his ass right in here. And oh boy, did they ever shoehorn his ass. Now I will say this. One thing that was striking as I watched this entire show and then especially the main event, the lack of star presence. A star presence does not automatically mean size or physique, so you idiots that can't understand context, get over yourselves. But presence. There are two guys in this match that were, in my opinion, two of the three guys on this show that have any presence. Edge is one. Cannot forget about Edge, obviously. And then there were two others, and neither one of them is the WWE champion Big E. It's Brock Lesnar, it's Bobby Lashley. And you say, well, Big E has presence. If they had done better by him with his title reign, maybe. But they didn't. So he doesn't. And what a fucking audible they called. I guess I gotta ask, what was gonna be the plan exactly if he didn't go down this route? Was Big E gonna retain? 
Did you throw away other plans just to make our knee-jerk reflex reaction move? Like when you had Biggie call his shot on social media and then fucking cash in the money in the bank in rust fashion on Raw a few months back. Was that the plan? Were you going to have a Kevin Owens or a Seth Rollins win? Were you going to have Bobby Lashley win? And did you just throw all of that by the wayside? Because you had to do something with Brock Lesnar. Apparently. Holy hell. And even within the match, I felt like they really could have played up the lashley Lesnar element. It was the one thing that fans were really pointing to, at least the ones on social media, which... Probably isn't that out of whack, but also is indicative of the problem of people aren't saying that I want to see Big E and Lashley or Big E and Brock. They're more focused on Brock and Lashley. That's a problem. Instead, they just threw it in there in the middle of the match. Lashley just hits Lesnar with the spear. Instead of getting like that big, ah, moment where you could really test the crowd and you could really sit there and get a feel for if fans were going to latch onto this, they just kind of randomly threw it in there in the match and then so is it. But at the end of the day, as I tweeted, they had the picture of Brock Lesnar with the frickin' championship. And I sat there and tweeted, when Vince calls you to beat the Black World Champion. Because apparently that's what Brock Lesnar fucking is. He certainly is the New Day killer at this point, isn't he? Holy shit. See, WWE, I will say, has gotten better in recent years in terms of how they feature their black wrestlers, in terms of giving them opportunities they previously would not even be in the neighborhood or the hemisphere of sniffing. Hence Bianca and Sasha main eventing Night One of Mania. Sasha, Bianca being champions. Big E being a champion. Lashley being a champion. Like, there has been progress. That said... This is not necessarily the best work. look, especially when you look at some of the dumb, ignorant shit that the CEO of the other major company in this country said in Tony Khan. You just couldn't help yourself. You just had to wade into that mix, I guess, huh? So what are you going to do now? Brock Lesnar's your new WWE champion. You just throw in all the other shit with Roman by the wayside? Are you sitting there and doing Brock versus Roman, champion versus champion at the Rumble? Maybe you have Brock beat Roman, but it's not for the title, so that way Roman could have been beaten by somebody? Or are you just going to totally forget that? If it's not that, then are you going to have Big E get a rematch? I don't even see why you'd fucking bother at this point, because you clearly didn't care. Look at the shit that you did in his title reign. When he keeps losing all the goddamn time, that's not good. People don't want to see a champion that's supposed to be somebody you're supposed to get behind. That loses all the fucking time. That's not how you build a champion. I mean, what are you going to do now? If you're telling me you're setting the table for Lashley to win the Royal Rumble, and it's Lashley, ver Lashley versus Lesnar at WrestleMania for the WWE Championship, then it very well may all be fucking worth it. It may be. But you could have also done this without having Big E be the one to get pinned. You had Kevin Owens in there, he doesn't mean shit. You had Seth Rollins in there, it didn't mean shit. You didn't have to pin the champion in a fucking fatal five-way. Vince went out of his way to make sure that happened. This certainly has some Becky Lynch, Bianca, SummerSlam vibes. The one difference was, at least this match was in 27 fucking seconds. Now, if you want to get really positive in your spin on this, you can say, well, at least there's some type of uncertainty and at least some type of what are they going to do next element with WWE. And you don't have that a lot nowadays. And I don't disagree with that. I want to be clear. That's fair. But not like this. Not like this. And now you're just throwing under yet another young talent to put over somebody from the past is basically what you're doing with Lesnar. Where Big E as a champion is wrestling regularly on TV, now you'll never see the title defended or the champion wrestling on Raw on a show that really badly needs it. Whatever. Sometimes when you have to make a split-second decision, you make the decision and it is what it is. 
But goddamn, it feels like it's a New Year's same old shit for WWE, doesn't it?